so I'm certain you came for varied reasons today. Is why do you want to learn more about pre-planning in the future? And I can tell you that on um, the number of years that I've been doing this, uh, there are a few set reasons that people talk about it. It kind of goes through it within this for sure. Um, I'll tell you this, that the main reason that I hear, quite honestly, is people want to take care of things so that their loved ones don't have to be concerned about it at the time of, of their passing. It can be children. Um, it can be you know relatives if they don't have any children. Um, and so they just want to sit down and talk about what their wishes are. As far as pre-planning the funeral, it can take um, any tact that you like. I sit with people that say, I just want to give you the basic information so that something happens to me, you know, my family knows what my wishes are. Yeah. Others say I want to take, give you the basic information. I also want to pre-fund the funeral so that it's not their concern at that point in time that I have to worry about them paying for it. And there are a number of instruments that we do use to pre-fund funerals. And I'll talk about those a little bit as well. So other people say, well, you know, and usually this is for a loved one that they say, Joe, I've been notified that, you know, my mother, my aunt, um, is going to have to go under Medicaid or public assistance. And here in the state of Wisconsin, if they do do that, we can set money aside for their funeral and what we call irrevocably assigned. Meaning that that money then no longer counts toward their assets. So this is a good thing. So someone can work their entire life, you know, have funds built up, and through no fault of their own, um, develop an illness that uh, requires long-term care and long-term care today is quite expensive you know, on, a, on a monthly basis. So they can have that care, but then also they can take some of those funds that they worked so hard to earn and set that money aside for their funeral. Okay, so that's another reason that individuals talk to me about it. It's for Medicaid planning. So this brochure talks a little bit about that. We have a number of brochures here on the table. Feel free to you know, grab them um, and uh, talk about them. Something that uh, um, I'll go through with you is a booklet of the various types of services that we have and offer. You can call any funeral home and ask them specific costs for what their services are and they have to give them to you. Okay? They cannot say, well, you know, talk about it. So with this, we have basic services put together for you and then also, here on the general price list, these services are itemized. Because a lot of times people, when they meet with me for pre-planning, their main concern is, you know, what's the cost? You know, I can, yeah, I've got to give you one of those, but what's the cost of this service? Joe, if I do this, what's the cost of cremation versus burial? What's involved in it? And so we discuss all of those things. Because when you pre-plan a funeral, there are a number of aspects that you look at. The first is what we call funeral home goods and services. And that's what we here at Ryan Funeral Home would provide to a family. And the other funeral home would do the same. So though I'm, I'm from Ryan, I can speak to you about any other funeral homes here in, in Madison, in the state of Wisconsin, um, you know, offer these same goods and services. Then there are other items that we call cash advance items. And these items, a lot of times, individuals don't think about. But it's something that I make certain that I discuss with them so they are aware of them. Cash advance items are items that the funeral home pays on an individual's behalf at the time of need and just adds it to the invoice. We don't control those costs. With the Ryan Funeral Home, if you sit down with me and you choose a particular service and you decide to refund that and you fund that service in full, those services are guaranteed no matter how, how far down the road the need is. With cash advance items, these are estimates. They include things like an obituary. Any idea what the average cost of an obituary in the Wisconsin State Journal is today? No idea. The average we have found is about $400. How much? $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400. $400
Um, another item that people think about is um, for burial, the opening of the grave. You know, cemeteries charge for opening of a grave. And those items today, for example, here in the major cemeteries in Madison are $850. How much? $850. In Madison? Yes, at Resurrection, um, uh, Forest Hill, and um, Roseland. The other cemeteries vary a little bit. So these are all costs that we can talk about um, up front, make people aware of what they are. And not that I want to get hung up on the cost of what the services are, but a lot of times that's what interests people the most. Why don't I have sunset memory? Sunset memory? Um, that one I don't know off, off the top of my head, but ask me a little bit later and I'll be able to give you that. I have a booklet with all the basic cemetery costs um, here in Madison. Would Verona be similar price-wise? Verona's less, I can tell you that. Once again, you know, I can give you all the information um, out of this. But so, um, from here, you know, I listen to cemeteries. Another thing, are you members of a parish? You have a faith, you know, that you may be like a religious service. Well, the clergy um, will be given an honorarium for that. There are suggested honorariums for clergy or an organist at a given um, um, church. So these are all things that are all entailed in the pre-planning. And this is where you can go as in-depth with it as you'd like. As I say, a lot of times you might say, I just want to give you the basic information, leave it at that. Other times people want to go and say, you know what? I want to give them a general idea what the flowers cost. You know, So we can talk about things like that. So as you think about this, there are a lot of things, decisions to be made, a lot of things to talk about. But quite honestly, that's why people like pre-planning is because then all of a sudden, at the time of need, when you're very emotional, you know, all of a sudden all these things, all these questions come up and, you know, what do I do? Um, I tell the story, my father passed away in 1978, quite suddenly from a heart attack at age 65. I was a funeral director at that time. I'm the youngest of seven children. So we got together in mom and dad's home on the next morning. And uh, my brothers and sisters looked at me and said, okay, Joe, you know, you've been in a business. I say it's not a business, it's a profession, but you know. <laughs> but so, break dad's obituary. The emotions were flowing through me, and I had written hundreds of obituaries. At that point in time, I couldn't think the first thing of the outline of an obituary. You know, so I use that personal heart, and then when you deal with families that something happens like that, even if a death may be expected due to a long-term illness or something like that, there's still all these things walling up that it's difficult at that point in time to make all these decisions. That's why it's a good thing, quite honestly, if you have time and the wherewithal to pre-plan. And I'll tell you this, different people are ready at different points in their lives. You know, uh, both my wife and I have our funerals pre-planned and our youngest daughter was all for it and you know, said, yes, okay, everything's in line, where is it? Our oldest daughter said, basically, I don't want to hear anything about it. Sarah knows what's happening. She can take care of it. You know? So even within your children and things like that, I meet with individuals who say, yes, I'm doing this, but you know, I'm not going to tell my children for a while because it really upsets them. Well, unfortunately, you know, death is a part of life. You know, and it's inevitable for all of us at this point in time. So that's why people pre-plan. It's, you know, what is best for them? What type of service do they like? Um, here's a brochure, and it talks about your life, your story. You know, what type of service would you like? Um, you know, what is your story of life? Uh, a lot of times, just for statistical information on a certificate, um, you know, we need names. What was your mother's maiden name, or an individual's maiden name? Um, you know, things of that nature. So there are a lot of questions. There are well over 120 questions and decisions that have to be made at the time, you know, that we could, that I could go through with the family in a setting that, you know, they're comfortable with. So let's talk a little bit about the types of services. And as I say, um, in this booklet, um, we have the basic types of services that individuals choose. And there is, if you look through this, there is one price, one cost involved. And I'll start with the back page. Who in this room plans to be cremated? What? Who in this room plans to be cremated? 
burial or cremation? I'm planning cremation. My wife's burial, cremation. Cremation is becoming much more prevalent. Fully, probably about a third of the funerals that we do at Ryan's Day are cremations. I can tell you this, that about close to 50% of the pre-arrangements I make are cremations. You know, and I make pre-arrangements quite honestly for anyone, you know, in their, if, if they're within a long-term care facility, they're in their 20s and 30s, you know, up to, to their 90s. The other day I just uh, made a pre-arrangement for an individual, she's 96 and she swears she's going to make 100. But she wanted to set this aside at this point in time. So, cremation. Well, there are various services options for cremation. There can be what we call a direct cremation with no memorialization, meaning that a cremation takes place and there are no services. The family just wishes that the ashes be placed in a basic wood urn and then given to um, whatever family member they designate. But there aren't any services. Within that, there can be a private family viewing is so desired. One of the things... What's that? What's, I, what's the size of them? The size of what? Of these boxes. Oh, these boxes are large enough to contain a human body. Yeah, this is a, this is a, a rendering of what actual the cremation takes place. When someone is cremated, there is no need for a casket. So, what is used basically is a crest board or hard corrugated container just to transport the body to the crematory. In the state of Wisconsin, we have to wait at least 48 hours prior to a cremation. Why? State law. Everybody has to be viewed by a medical examiner. Sure, it's death. No, to make certain that there is no foul play or things of that nature. Okay. Once somebody's cremated, yeah. there's no going back. You know, and then there is in Dane County. There's a Dane County permit that is required for that as well. Is the body fully clothed? If the family so desires, yes, yes. There is no embalming with this direct cremation. Right. There is not a state law that a body has to be embalmed. Okay. So refrigeration takes place. The body is refrigerated. The medical examiner is notified. Comes out to the funeral home. Lose the body. Takes pictures. Gives an authorization to have this body cremated. The family has to sign an authorization to say the body can be cremated. Cremation can take place after that 48 hour time frame. And then the cremated remains are placed in an urn and given to the family. Once someone is cremated, as I say, it's final disposition. So what happens to those ashes is totally up to the family members. Okay? Is there a state law that, that bars any way of disposition at all? Like, for instance, in a river or yes. or on private property, if you own the property, you can do with those ashes as you want. If you're going to use public property, um, you are subject to laws okay. if you are found out to have done it. Okay, yes. But, um, you know, from the disposition standpoint, though, once that cremation takes place, that urn is released to the family, and we can do with it as they see fit. So, um, my yes. brother-in-law passed away from cancer at age 56, unfortunately. Great guy. Uh, my, my sister um, took his urn, buried it in their yard, and she planted a tree. Mm -hmm. And the tree's growing. She said that, uh, you know, took his nourishing the tree. And it gives her a sense of, of peace knowing that he's near, and that's where his ashes are. So, you know, that's how she treated it. I've talked to individuals who burial can be in a cemetery. Um, you know, with a headstone or marker so someone can have a place to come to, um, or scattering of ashes is quite prevalent as well. I have individuals who keep an urn in their home, you know, of, of a loved one. And if there's multiple children, how, is that divided up? or how? Do it can be. That's an excellent question. It can be. Now there are what we call keepsake urns. So that an urn is smaller, and a portion of the cremated remains can be placed in that urn and given to a child. Now, um, jewelry can even be made out of some of the ashes and things of that nature. So it's many and varied, depending upon what your thoughts and wishes are. So, but within that standpoint, so this is a direct cremation with no memorialization. Then we have a full memorial cremation tribute. And this is more of a traditional service with just the urn present. I have a question. Mm -hmm. 
how did you arrive at this figure here? $3,615. But there are different size bodies. Yes. That does not come into play from the standpoint of what the actual cremation costs are. I mean, we'll take, you know, a body from any size to uh, too large, yeah. Okay, like an infant, you know, versus a full-size individual. I will tell you this, for infants, the Ryan Feeder Home works with families for infants. Okay. And quite honestly, a lot of times there are no charges. That's Connie and Roman Ryan's on position. But yeah, those are very difficult circumstances for a family. Okay. So in a case like that, yeah, then that would vary. But this is for an adult, a typical adult. Okay. Mentions optional private family viewing. Yes. So that is basically where a family part of dealing with grief and death is the aftermath of it. Different people grieve in different ways. If you so desire. That, this, that the old, you know, for the realization of death, you know, someone passed away, a loved one died, and if it would help an individual start the grieving process by being able to see them, and in essence start saying their goodbyes, they could have just a private family viewing where they could come in and see that person in a private setting and begin the grieving process or be with in the grieving process as they best see fit. We always offer that to a family. And it's up to the individual whether or not they want to do it. And I, by the individual, I'm talking about your loved ones, not you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm oh, sorry. Yep. Um, that, like viewing 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or what do you? As far as for the process of the individual to, to view the body, mm -hmm. we tell them to take their time. We had this for my grandmother. 30 years ago. And we just went in and spent some time together, 15, 20 minutes, and yeah. we had coffee, went home. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just the immediate family. Yeah, it's just private for immediate family long. members. And yeah. you there have was no rush to it either. No. Mm -hmm. But it helps, quite honestly, it helps a number of individuals to just go through the process. That's what I was going to ask. You know? In your, in your profession, do you find that? It does help the person begin their grieving journey. It depends upon the individual. Some people, well, you ask, you know, would you like to see dad? And if there are a number of children, some might say yes, and others would say no, I want to remember him the way I last saw him or whatever. You know, so if, let's say if someone is um, terminally ill, and today hospice is a great thing. I mean, my mother passed away. Um, and six of her seven children were surrounded by her. She was at a hospice facility in Fond du Lac. She, we knew she was going, they called us and said, you know, looks like your mother's time. So we spent time around her. Now, she had the traditional finger open casket and everything, but in a case like that, if someone is to be cremated, maybe a family member would say, you know what, I spent time with her at the end. But the brother who's coming from cross country didn't get a chance, he might want to say, yeah, I'd like to see mom. So it's up to them. We always give the individuals the option. You know, we don't dictate that they have to do it, but we give that option and say, you know, and when I pre-plan with people, most of the time they say, no, Joe, I don't, want, I don't want you to put that into my planning, but I do tell them, well, this is what you're saying now, but I said, at that time, I need the director with your permission right now, we'll still ask your children if they would like to do that. They can say, no, that's fine. But the worst thing to happen is they were never given the option. Mm -hmm. And then after the fact, it's like, you know, I would like to have seen Dad one more time. So that's that's why we, we build that into the service. You know, it is possible. Yes, there is a little bit of an extra fee for it because there's a little bit of extra work that has to be done. But I'll, I'll be quite blunt and upfront. The individual is not involved. Cosmetics are not placed on the body or whatever. I mean, a shawl can be placed on or clothes, so desired, and things like that. But, you know, it gives an individual time to start that grieving process or if they're within that grieving process to help them along. The old scene is believing. You know, so, once again, though, it depends upon the individual. So that is built into this um, immediate cremation 
with no memorialization. Then there is what we call a full memorial cremation tribute. Now this is more of a traditional service, but instead of body present, the urn is present. Okay, so people, cremation takes place, cremated remains are placed in the urn, and if it's at the funeral home or at a church, you know, typically the urn is placed um, on a table, a days, surrounded me by a bouquet of flower with a picture of the individual, a cross or a crucifix. There can be picture boards, um, a register book, memorial folders, you know, and a service can take place. So that is what this service talks about. Okay. Then <clears throat> there's a traditional cremation tribute. Now this is a tribute where cremation takes place, but it's more of a traditional service with a visitation, the body present, things of that nature. Within this, um, embalming does take place. Um, I'm Catholic, raised Catholic. Catholic Church for many years said, you cannot be cremated. Then they softened the stance on that in the 60s and said, okay, cremation can take place, um, but must have a body, you know, present, things like that. Um, now, depending upon where you are, parishes, they can have the full cremation memorial tribute, but a lot of the old traditional Catholics still believe in a strong visitation. People come pay their respects, offer their condolences to family members, things like that. Um, and with the other face as well. So this is an option where you can have a full visitation. Um, when cremation became more prevalent, caskets, the caskets were put in the crematory as well. Well, these caskets now are manufactured that quite honestly, they're rental caskets, the inside of the casket pulls out and there's a strong container that that is placed in the crematory. So an individual family does not have to purchase an entire casket. So with cremation, you can take, um, as I say, anywhere from no service whatsoever to a um, service with the urn present, excuse me, to a service with traditional service. Okay. I am. Mm -hmm. I'm considering a donation. Okay. Of perhaps skin or 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 or, or in it. and uh, but where do I look for that? For a donation, that is not part of the funeral process. That takes prior place prior to that. So if you do want to offer a donation, which is great. Um, you know, I strongly suggest that if, if you're able to do that. But for there, you would want to contact a, a facility, hospital facility, healthcare provider, um, an organization for donations, and make your wishes known. Mm -hmm. And then, could anyone go for the optional private family viewing? Yes, yes. Depending upon what is donated. But I mean, a lot of times, eye donations, um, skin grafts, bones. Things like that can be donated, and then you know an individual still is able to have a viewing. Yes, but a donation, or they call it the harvesting, takes place. You know, a person passes away; they're going to donate some body parts. Body parts. Typically, the harvesting takes place at a medical facility, so we might take and transport the individual to the facility, or depend upon the organization involved, they might handle the transportation themselves, and then we go to that facility and bring the individual back to the funeral home for preparation of whatever services they have. Well, I'm wondering if anyone, let's say, has an accident, but I'll say like in the vehicle, mm -hmm. yeah, some head on accident, and you pronounce dead, mm -hmm. or well, you're, they think you're dead. Well, I would hope they know you're dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering, <laughs> you know, <laughs> But they, they wouldn't start harvesting then, would they? Oh no, that, that's a medical question. And for, for organs to be harvested, a person has to be declared legally dead. And it's not just for yes. the doctor? Yeah. They yeah. wouldn't harvest? No, no. So, but that is something totally outside the realm of the funeral. But those questions, that's an excellent question because that's on people's minds. And if that so happens, I mean, on a regular basis, we have individuals who do don donate body parts, and we take care of the services, you know, as the family sees fit. Is there a time element between the time the person is pronounced dead and the removal of the organs? That's a medical question I can't answer. Okay. 
that, that you know that's outside my realm. That, as I say, that's a medical profession. I'm 100% I'm certain that you know they're they are legally declared dead. But then the time frame before um, the harvesting can begin, that I don't know. You'd have to talk to a professional, uh, you know, um, medical professional about that. But in today's world, you know, donation is much more prevalent. And you know, I have a donor card on my driver's license, so. To answer your question, if I'm killed in a car accident, hopefully there somebody's going to get some good organs out of me. Yeah, but um, excellent question. Though. So, so that does not affect the funeral service. But then, for that, your funeral director will not plan for that donation. That's something that you know has to be. If you know you want to definitely do it, plan for it ahead of time. Let your family know about it because the family members are the individuals who have to sign off on. The donation aspect of things. That probably would go on your um, attorney for health care. Uh, where would you put that? Um, I would make certain that that is known to loved ones because if you put something um, on an attorney for health care or in a will or something like that, it can be too late. By the time you know an individual will is read or something of that nature. A lot of times they aren't read until after the services. So for a case, if you're sincere about wanting to have a donation, talk to your family members, loved ones, talk to a medical care professional, an organization that handles donations, and they'll take you through the process of what best to do with that. And then um, how would the family members know? Yeah. You would issue them a card? Or? Once again, that's out of my realm of, of expertise, so, you know, talk with an organization and then they would know exactly what your wishes are. Who do we call like university hospital or how do they? What, what Becky will take your name and we can do some research on that for you. Um, okay, just talk you, to your doctor. Yeah, but there are organizations, you know, specific organizations and if you want we can we can do some research for you on that. Okay. Yeah, so we'll get your name and, and answer those questions for you. I know for whole body donations and stuff, yes, typically they go through the hospital, but then there are parameters that they set, you know, before they will accept, you know, whole body donations. But for individual um, body parts and stuff, you know, um, we can work with you on that to get you some information. So that that's pretty much the cremation aspect of things. Then, as you go through the booklet, um, the traditional burials, okay? If an individual is cremated, Cremation takes place, cremated remains are placed in an urn, and um, that pretty much is it, final disposition. Casket, burial, um, pretty much a cemetery location has to be chosen or is chosen. Uh, grave markers, um, outer container for the casket it can be a concrete grave liner, which is the minimum requirement for most cemeteries, or it can be a sealed vault. And those all add to what um, is determined for the burials. But um, within this, um, we start with basic burial tributes, and there's a listing of what the funeral home goods and services are, what it all entails, and then the type of caskets. And with any funeral home that you go to, the basic services of the funeral home director and staff, which includes registered books, prayer cards or memorial folders, um, a DVD of pictures and things like that, are all costed at the same price, the only difference that you'll see as you go through this booklet in the differences in price is the cost of the casket. You know, a wooden casket um, is going to be more expensive than a basic 20 gauge metal casket. Um, you know, a bronze casket is going to be more expensive than a wooden casket. So um, an individual can choose what type of casket they like, um, and then all the complete services are included within that. So that talks about, so, um, there weren't really any burials uh, within this group, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. But an individual family member can decide that they want a burial, um, and someone can be cremated. I wish to be cremated. My wife is going to be buried. Uh, she's from a small town, Camelsport, and uh, we're going to be buried in the cemetery there, St. Matthew Cemetery. While well, cemeteries now have what they call second rights of interment, so that her casket will be able to be placed in the ground, and then my urn on the same ground space will be able to be placed on that same ground. Okay. Um, 
So, or if people have grave plots and they purchased them years ago, now they say, you know, we aren't going to have burial any longer. We're going to be cremated. Most cemeteries will allow for two cremated remains to be placed in the same burial plot. They'll charge you for that second right, but it's not as expensive as buying another plot. So there are other options. Typically with um, ground burial, uh, there's a marker, you know, something that um, people want to take into account. Um, you know, um, monument. I remember my father, as I said, passed away quite suddenly in 1978, and mom purchased a nice big, you know, marble marker in St. Mary Cemetery in Eden, where I grew up. And for many years, we'd go visit Dad's grave, and there's Claude J. Wimberger across the top, Claude J. and Gertrude Roll right next to it. And as she found peace in knowing that she was going to be there, but Mom. Um, lived quite a num number of years, she lived to be 87, and you know, we go to the cemetery and say, well, you know, I know that's where I'm going to be, and Joe, all you have to take care of is what the year of death, which, which we did when she passed away. So. Um, so those are all things within, you know, the tradition of the ground burial. But I'm, I'm here to tell you, another reason people pre-plan, and this just happened the other day, I, I met with an individual, she came here, moved here, and all her children are in Texas. And one of her questions was, Joe, what happens if I die in Texas? So if you pre-plan a funeral with us here at the Ryan Funeral Home or any other funeral home, and you still set the funds aside, and the funds are set aside in insurance policies so they're fully protected, her concern was, well, what happens if they have money? That money is still there, and it can be transferred to a funeral home in Texas if she so desires. So today, every society, we're all pretty much mobile. My two daughters live in California. So, you know, people are getting spread out. The timing of funerals such, you know, how long can you wait before you have a funeral, you know, after the time of death, all those things are things that we take into account and we sit down with family members at the time, you know, and work out a time frame that they're comfortable with to have the services that they so desire. Um, I have a question. I travel quite a bit overseas. Mm -hmm. And with that transfer of the funeral, mm -hmm. how overseas as well? Because one of the, I was, I was overseas when a colleague of mine passed away, and his living, book, whatever it was, said that follow, because we're in the Foreign Service, said, well, follow whatever traditions are in that country. Okay. And we happened to be in Thailand, so he was cremated with a Buddhist ceremony, even wow. though he was a uh, Episcopal priest. Oh, really? Yeah. But I'm sure the Buddhists have good care of <laughs> He was open-minded. Yeah. Anyway, with, with this... The money would be there, yes. It would be, okay. Yes, yes. So, you know, um, there would be a little bit more of the um, work to go through. But right. I work with National Guardian Life, which is headquartered oh. here in Madison. Okay. And so, you know, exchange rates and stuff like that. But we, okay. they would get the money to where the need is. Okay. 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 I will tell you this, if, if you do travel, and, and um, I also work with a lot of people that winter in California or Florida. Mm -hmm. This time of year, usually in another few weeks, I'll be, start getting busy with them. They want to update, you know, what's going on or let me know what's going on with them or they want to set things aside. And in that case, if an individual wants to have services here in Madison and they pass away elsewhere, the first call should be to the Ryan Funeral Home here in Madison or to their local funeral home because all funeral homes are part of a national organization, and we can then deal with the need at that exact location. Versus calling a funeral home there, they don't know exactly what the services are, things of that nature. So um, that's what I, I counsel families is that if something does happen in the distance, give us a call first, let us know what your wishes are, and then from there we can coordinate you know, to what is best for you and your family and also from a cost basis, you know, what is the most reasonable as well. Um, any other questions? You mentioned that if you prepay it, the money is uh, uh, put into the insurance. Yes. As I know, a few years back, uh, someone we knew in a nearby town at a funeral home developed a problem with the money that was prepaid that uh, wasn't really uh, that wasn't um, handled the way it was supposed to and uh, this was maybe sometime 
Yeah, what, 20 years ago, okay. so maybe things were handled differently. Than well, that. at any given point in time, regardless if it was 20 years ago or not, um, a funeral home cannot take money on its own and put it into their own private accounts for future funerals. The money has to be trusted. And it can be, it, when I first started in the profession in the mid-70s, most of them were in bank trusts. And so they come in, they prearrange, they want to prefund their funeral, we took it, and we went and we put it in a CD at the local bank. You know, and it was trusted there. So they got a report as to what was in the account and we did as well. Well, things change. Banks have been bought and sold over the course of time. Um, and the return from banks is not that great. Uh, you know, CDs even at this point in time. So now um, it's more prevalent um, that it is put in an insurance policy. And there are companies such as National Guardian like that that do that. The funds are fully protected, the insurance commission in the state of Wisconsin, things like that. I'm a licensed insurance agent. I have to be in order to deal with these types of products. But to answer your question in that case, it sounds like that individual funeral home, and unfortunate you know, for our profession, it happened. But that money never should have been available to them alone. It should have always been put in a trust at that point in time. And any you know, reputable professional funeral director would make certain that that occurs. Is there any kind of record given to the, say, yearly or whatever, to the individual that prepaid that, you know, of that money? What's it's not given on a, on a regular, ongoing basis. What happens is, is that the individual gets a copy of the policy. We get a copy of the policy at the funeral home as well. And at any given point in time, you're able to, um, you know, call and find out what the total dollar amounts within the policy are. Um, most of them are single pay pre-life policies. So, you know, a single payment is made. If someone says, well, I don't want to pay for the full amount at this point in time, they can pay for a given dollar amount they're comfortable with in another six months, a year, or whenever down the road, say I want to add to it, and then we just write it into the policy. There are multi-pay policies which have some easy payoff plans, but when I sit with a family um, or an individual, we walk through the process so they make certain that they understand exactly you know, what the total costs are. Um, I will be upfront to say that I, um, from a multi-pay plan, pay plan, you are paying for the cost of the insurance, you're paying some interest rates and stuff, so you're better off just doing a lump sum now and maybe another lump sum later on until you get to the point where those services are fully guaranteed. And that's what families typically like to do is they say, you know, I, I just a few weeks back I met with an individual um, retired at age 62, um, met with him and his wife, uh, engineer, and he said, great health, he's retired though, you want to take care of this, set the money aside. His wife didn't want to talk about it at this point in time. And after he wrote the check and says the services are guaranteed, Joe and I said, yes, except for the cash advance and those are estimates. He's totally understandable. He said, I'm going to my cabin up north. He said, I feel comfortable. I'm peaceful. So, you know, so that was that was his his moment. And so it depends upon the individuals and when they're ready to talk about it specifically. Um, I know that CDs are pay very little. Mm -hmm. So what, what do the insurance companies pay? What's their rate? Right now they are based on the bond market. The returns from the insurance companies are based on the bond market. And it's around 2%. 2%. Bonds, you know, the bond market's down a little bit. The bond market? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so right now it's about 2% and it fluctuates depending upon what the bond market is. They adjust it on an annual basis. Uh -huh. You just, uh, there was one phrase that you said, yeah, we're good to go, except for the cash advance. What cash advance? Cash advance items. Would, oh, those are things that. I'll show you, uh, yeah, that's, it's the most difficult for, for people to understand. And um, <clears throat> so when you look in that booklet, there is not a listing of cash advance items. But what I will do is, one thing we didn't talk about any veterans. There are veteran benefits that may be available, but this is a form I use. It's just a worksheet. So when I meet with individuals, this is a worksheet I use. And if you look below the line, on the top it says uh, funeral home goods and services. And then on the bottom it says cash advances in blue. And if you notice, it says estimated. So these are kind of a listing of the various cash advance items that somebody may or may not want 
to set money aside for or to plan. So when you see obituary and you see in parentheses $400, that's the um, estimated cost of an obituary in Wisconsin State Journal. So grave opening and closing. Um, vault delivery and installation. If they have a concrete grave liner or a vault, today there's a $279 charge for the delivery and installation of that vault. What did you say the grave opening? Um, I'll give you the one. What you, what you want? Sunset? Which, yeah. Do you have a specific cemetery? Uh, in Verona here. The, the Verona? I think I know what it is, but I don't want to go off the top of my head. Verona Cemetery. There is a $65 marking fee. And then uh, weekdays, it's $475. Um, cremations are $250 for a weekday. Four hundred and how much? Four seventy-five plus sixty-five dollars for a marking fee. Okay. Now that's at Verona, but you said sunset. That's correct. Let's check out sunset. Sunset Memory Gardens. Uh, Nine hundred dollars Monday through Friday for the opening of a grave. With what then? Nine hundred dollars on Monday through Friday. On um, Saturdays before noon, it's eleven $1 hundred dollars. So you can see the difference. Oh, yeah, the plan you're for cremation, it's six hundred dollars at sunset as of today. So you can see the differences in the costs. You know, the larger cemeteries. Is there a marker in the sunset memory? A marker? Yeah. Well, that you would talk at the cemetery about. Yeah, they have markers there. You don't know what it costs, it? Oh, no. No, that could no. vary. Yeah, that varies. Yeah, yeah that, that depends upon the cemetery. See, that's separate from what the, the funeral home does. Before you close your book, okay. go, go back to Verona and mm -hmm. tell me again what the prices or the costs are and what the service is. Sexton's Art, there's a $65 marketing fee for it all being closing. And Tom Lindley digs the graves and yeah. he charges four seventy five weekdays. <laughs> Take notes, bro. <laughs> oh okay, what's the marking? What are they doing? Basically, somebody probably art goes out and has to mark exactly okay. where Tom comes in to dig. Okay. Oh. You know. Okay. I could dig my own. Hey, where I grew up in Eden, the Vandegrit brothers used to dig them, St. Mary's Cemetery, and it's on a hill of sand, and they charge $50 for digging a grave. This was back in the 60s, but yeah. It, there has to be a certain depth, is that correct? Yeah. If you're cremated. For cremation? If, yeah. Is cremation, if, if you're well, cremated, does the depth change? It's not as deep. I mean, the old oh. six, the old adage, six feet under, yeah. usually that's in the bottom of the grave. Okay. You know, and then the vault and stuff. So somebody's, there's not six feet of dirt on top of a vault or a casket. For cremation, they're only going to go down. They aren't going to go down six feet. They'll oh, go down just, so. just, yeah, just deep enough to make certain your urn is covered and protected. Yeah. So, so the casket goes into a vault. A, a vault or a concrete grave liner. Now, this is not a law. This is cemetery requirements. And I'll show you this. So, here's a little schematic. And why don't you show that to her as I I'll hold it up front too. It's basically what happens in cemeteries if just a casket's placed in the ground. The casket, even if it's metal, it's going to rust and decay wood, and you have ground settled. So over the course of time, cemeteries have to come through high maintenance costs and refill the sod. So they require an outer container made of concrete that that casket goes into that will not erode and decay. Okay. Now, it doesn't have to be a vault. Now, people say vault, but in our profession, when someone says vault, a vault is sealed against the entrance of outside elements, elements typically groundwater. So, a sealed vault. Um, a Monticello sealed vault today, the least expensive sealed vault is $1,390. The minimum requirement is a concrete grave line. Now this is a large concrete box, you know the size of the casket. The casket has to go inside of that. It has a concrete lid, so it's very heavy. 
And the, that's the minimum requirement that a cemetery will require. It's not sealed against the entrance of groundwater or anything. And the cost for that today is $960. If those are pre-funded at the Ryan Feeder Home, we do guarantee those items as well, that, that cost, that's, that uh, particular item is guaranteed. So that is when we talk about what the cemetery requirements are. Now, at sunset, they might have vaults already in the ground. Some cemeteries, I believe Sunset might be one of them, where it might already be there, so you would not have to purchase that separately. It might have been purchased with the grave site already. Someone would have to call them? Yeah. You have, you presently have a spot at Sunset? No. Okay. But, so you could call Sunset, tell them you want to come out, meet with them. You can pick a location and they'll talk about all those things. Where would I find their number? Uh, I can give it to you. Sunset Memory Gardens. Okay, go back here. So, yes, um, and I see. So there's other other things here um, that we talk about. Um, this is a booklet that talks about putting your house in order. It talks about things other than the funeral plan. It talks about you know possibly a will. It talks about um, your various personal aspects that you know a family member or someone should know. It's so one thing that we talk about when I when I sit and make pre-arrangements with individuals are who's going to be the executor of the estate? Do they have one? You know, so whom would be the person that we should be dealing with at that point in time? And a question always comes up is certified copies of the certificate. Why would you need certified copies? It's an ease for the executor. As we file a certificate, we can get certified copies for them. So it's not an expensive item. Today they're $20 for the first one and $3 thereafter per order. But it's something that's just a convenience sake that we work with families to make that transition easier. So within this booklet, it'll talk about a number of things, but this is something I always share with people. And also, a lot of times individuals, once they find out the cost of what an obituary is, they say, man, I'm not gonna, you know, want everything written out in there. So I give people an obituary outline. You can pen your own obituary, you know, to what you felt, um, to kind of tell your life, your story a little bit. And um, if people do that, and they send it to me, we keep it on file. Becky enters all of our pre means in our system, so it's all computerized, and we'd also have paper files um, of all the pre-arrangements that we've made. So we, everything that um, is in there is confidential, but it's kept on file for that individual. Can we go to any other Ryan funeral homes for meetings, or do we have to go to a specific one? No, you can go to any of the Ryan funeral homes. I work at all four locations. Mm -hmm. Um, so just call, and um, I will return your call and set an appointment, or I come to people's homes. Oh, okay. You know, if someone is unable um, to get out, um, I do do that a lot. You know, where they want to discuss things, I will come to the houses. That's no problem whatsoever. Also, I have a few other things here for you. So, um, some pens, files. Combs, my wife laughs when she sees these. She said, Joe, you don't need a comb that much because you don't have that much hair. But, you know, these are nice bag closures so you don't have to eat the whole bag of chips. You can save one, save a little bit for later and keep it fresh. And then, as I said, some letter openers so when you get all those checks, okay. you, know, you can open the envelopes. Nice <laughs> so feel free to help yourself. The urns, what do they run? Urns, urns are, and most of the services are included. Um, if you wanted just a standalone, about $250. We do have some that are a little bit of an upgrade, and those are $350. Are they on display in the funeral? Yes. Okay. They are. I think I like that. One. They are on display, or if I do go to someone's home, I have a, a booklet um, that has pictures of all the urns in them, oh something God. larger, so I can go through and, and they can choose various urns. Mm -hmm. And depend upon if the urn, um, you know, is 
buried or some there are some urns that are not suitable for burial then we discuss that at that point in time like what uh wood really yeah cemeteries last seventh oh, just last week uh, um uh, found a cemetery person's going to be um urns going to be buried in bear room and the cemetery up there will take a wooden urn but that's always a question i ask same thing with a casket if you bury a wood urn ground collapses and all of a sudden they get depressions and so oh, they have to go back there for maintenance so it's up to the cemetery, cemetery yes will accept that or not. yes but i will tell you that the majority of the cemeteries here in madison will not accept a wooden urn okay. you know so um, there are some urns that are specifically made for burial and they're very nice if someone wants to have a service with the urn present a lot of the urns are more ornate so if you do want to have a service you know um, you can get have the urn present, you know, for the service, and it still would be suitable for burial or placed on a map or whatever. You're so, mm -hmm. so, just just so I'm clear, on the, mm -hmm. the free payment and the trust that it goes into, except for the cash things that you said, it covers those services even 20 years from now. In 20 years from now. Okay. Right. Not all funeral homes do that. The Ryans do do that, and I think the major other major funeral homes in Madison do as well, but I can't speak for them. Yeah. And and the way that that can be done is because there is a return on those policies. Mm -hmm. You know, and hopefully the return keeps up with the inflation. Well, I was wondering <laughs> about that. I was going to ask about the returns. Right. I was yeah. going to yeah. say, okay. Yeah. But, but let's say there's also a return if you set money aside for cash advances. That mm -hmm. return also increases their money available as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so it's percentage wise. Let's say if. If uh, two thirds is for the funeral goods and services, a third for the cash advances, mm -hmm. then one third of that interest gained over the years goes toward the cash advances. And how, how if, when we set up an appointment, how much time should we? Just Usually, we allow about an hour. Okay. You know? And a lot of times, people will meet with me and we'll go through things, and they'll take it. And I'll want to talk to a family member. You know. People out, I want to talk to my attorney or mm -hmm. my financial planner, and then they call me up and say, Okay, Joe, you know, now we're ready to uh, pre fund. And um, there is a, a number of, of papers that have to be gone through and explanations made, but uh, over the course of time, that just takes an extra 10 or 15 months. Well, on um, let's say I might be using a bank mm -hmm. or a a financial uh, institution to help with uh, with the finances. Okay. Um, are they equated with all these questions? Not well. If 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 you talk to a banker, probably not. You know, um, depending upon if they're a financial planner, they they would be. But that's why we give that list out. Because then they can go through and check just, you know, what items are there. And so a person can say, I just want to set aside, you know, um, right now today it's $20 for the first certified copy and $3 thereafter. So once again, it's not a large dollar amount. I mean, so if you talk about five of them, you know, it's $32. You know, but the key thing is, is you want to get enough so you don't get that extra $17 extra charge on the first one. But that's why I hand that out. So it depends upon the person's size of an estate and things like that, you know, and where the, the need is for the certified copies. You know. But um, feel free to share that with them. 